But in 2001, when Yang Jiechi arrived in Washington as the Chinese ambassador, relations had just undergone a freezing point. A U.S. spy plane crashed into a Chinese fighter over the sea near South China's Hainan Island. It happened 70 days after Bush took office. At the beginning of Bush's term, Sino-U.S. relations had a lot of negative elements. When the spy plane incident occurred, we had to make a response immediately to protect our nation's sovereignty and dignity. Before Hainan, Bush had described the two countries as strategic competitors. Many suspected he would take a tough stand on China policy. But after the 9-11 terrorist attack in 2001, relations took a different direction. Through all these things, the U.S. found that China is important in its foreign policy. It then took a more practical approach. Eight years after Bush took office, China-U.S. ties have seen great progress and the past several years have been the longest period of peaceful development in bilateral ties. During the Bush years, the Chinese and American leaders met an unprecedented 20 times. More than 60 dialogue and cooperation mechanisms were set up during that time. Then, on April the 1st this year, Presidents Hu Jintao and Barack Obama initiated the Strategic and Economic Dialogue. And in a global financial crisis, it's a most striking level of economic interdependence. China now holds more than $800 billion in U.S. Treasury bonds, more than any other nations. Two-way trade volume has surged from 2.4 billion U.S. dollars in 1979 to more than 300 billion in 2007, an increase of over 120 times. In January, when former U.S. President Jimmy Carter revisited China, he was stunned by the changes. You know, one of the biggest t tangible surprises would be how much money the United States owes China now. That's right. <laughs> uh, I think $800 billion or something like that. Uh -huh. uh, at that time, China was an extremely poor country with no money, and the United States was maybe the richest country on earth. Now we, we owe the Chinese people. And I don't think there's any doubt that this uh, diplomatic relationship between the United States and China has developed into one of the most important diplomatic ties in the world. From ping pong to basketball, China-U.S. ties have undergone a great transformation. But China's diplomatic shift isn't limited to the big powers. And with another continent, there is a very special friendship. In November 2006, the Wang Fujing Xinhua Bookstore in Beijing welcomed a special guest, Tapo Mbeki then President of South Africa. During the summit of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, the South African delegation brought forward an idea. President Mbeki would like to buy some books on China's development. At that time, I was the Chinese ambassador to South Africa. I said, Mr. President, your schedule is heavy. We could send you some books as a gift. But he insisted on buying them in person. He said the books publicized by foreign companies distorted China's image. Tabo Mbeki brought a dozen of books on China's economic reform, social development, culture and education. He then gave his motive. The president said, how much do we really know about China? The country's economy has been growing at a stunning speed. China's experience can provide a useful model for Africa. Mbeki's words got a warm response from his African friends. For the more than 40 African countries gathered in Beijing, the three-day summit provided many possibilities.
the Great Hall of the People witnessed a great scene in Chinese diplomacy. <laughs> President Hu Jintao shook the hand of every head of the African countries at the summit. In three days of summit, 35 bilateral talks. Less than three months after the summit, President Hu went to Africa. The aim was to translate words into action. Sudan was on the itinerary. But before the trip started, the newly appointed U.S. Special Envoy to Sudan suddenly visited Beijing. He asked the Chinese government to stop economic cooperation with Sudan. When President Hu visited Sudan, we faced international pressure as some Western countries were imposing sanctions against Sudan. Sudan's Darfur issue has been highly politicized by the Western world. The American government labeled the conflict between the Sudanese government and Darfur armed forces as genocide. Sudan resisted all the foreign interference. The deployment of a hybrid peacekeeping operation faced difficulties. China insists on a peaceful political solution on the Darfur issue. During President Hu's visit in Sudan, he met with the Sudanese president, Omar al-Bashir, and convinced him to show more flexibility on some problems. Less than a month after Hu Jintao's visit, the Sudanese government accepted a hybrid UN-African Union peacekeeping force in Darfur. China's role in the crisis won praise from the world, including the U.S. Special Envoy. Frankly speaking, China's diplomatic efforts help a lot. China-Africa friendship has stood the test of half a century. And in the past decade, developing countries have remained a key point in diplomacy. China's interaction with both the developing world and developed world will remain strong as it moves through the 21st century. In November 2006, Beijing held the China-Africa Cooperation Forum, which marked a new phase in relations. In April 2007, Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao went to Japan, melting the ice between the two countries. After seven years of preparation, on August the 8th, 2008, China's century-old dream of hosting the Olympics came true. In October 2008, leaders from Asia and Europe met in Beijing to bridge the continental divide to deal with global challenges. On November the 15th, 2008, President Hu Jintao and other G20 leaders gathered in Washington, D.C. for the first Global Economic Summit. On December the 26th, 2008, a Chinese naval fleet set off for an escort mission off the coast of Somalia, joining multinational efforts to fight rampant piracy. At the opening ceremony of the 2008 Beijing Olympics, harmony was a major theme. From the ancient form of its Chinese character He to its modern form, three appearances expressed China's constant pursuit of harmony. In the new millennium, a harmonious world continues to be the guiding ideology of China's diplomacy. At the UN summit in 2005, to commemorate the 60th anniversary of the world body, President Hu Jintao shared the concept.